inquiry-based land art course. Yes. And, uh, As an artist, I'm very, very interested in um, the block question and, and investigation about what things are. Uh, what is, is the big question that I kind of run around in my head all the time. Uh, so my own work, it doesn't have an emphasis or an attachment to a single media or a single way of working. It has an attachment to a way of thinking. Um, I, I got a master's degree in painting and drawing, and that's the foundation of my practice. But um, I do many, many other things, and I use those practices in novel ways as well. Okay. I'm not sure I'd call it land art, because that kind of makes me think of Robert Smithson and bulldozers and all that. And I'm not really making these huge changes in the landscape at all. But I am very interested in studying the landscape, studying the systems that are created, um, and I'm very interested in studying it uh, fairly close up. So in the, in the a distance that would be like the distance between the hand and the body. So um, take a tree, instead of standing way back and looking at it from a distance as if I was a human camera, I might get up close to it and look at the formations on the bark, look at insects that are on the tree, uh, look at the way that the roots branch apart and come together, all kinds of details that are interesting about the way the tree becomes a form and lives as a form in the world. So I'm not so interested in pictures, I'm interested in process, the way, that, the means by which things are what they are. So I have a location, and uh, then uh, I research the location. I re research the history of the location, I research the culture of the location, um, and it, eventually uh, I come up with, I would call them like a nexus, little places where things cross, which are particularly interesting, where many things come together and are kind of tied in a knot. And I like to get into those things and kind of untie them, and then maybe have the students make them into different patterns than they were. So the students are encouraged to even invent uh, cultural elements. Um, they can really invent anything. We could even have uh, an alternative community or an alternative political system. We could have all kinds of alternative things that are invented here. The importance is that they are manifest in imagery. And that imagery is collected, and uh, the quirkiness of it, and the, the way that it um, has sort of different associations or different connections to things, um, is is what becomes the product of the project. And uh, students make things, they photograph things, or maybe they just photograph things. Um, ways of doing this are all set out in the inquiry book, which is a book that I've written about this whole process of inquiring into communities and cultures and. Uh, uh, living in animal ones and uh, vegetation and, and people and politics, everything. And um, so they, they create imagery using that method and those are all collected together and put together into a presentation for the community uh, at the end. And that's a very interesting process. The inspiration really comes from the way that I look at things or the way that I work. And that is that I, uh, when I was a master's, uh, when doing my master's thesis, came up with this idea that it was an interesting thing to um, look at things in the space between the hand and the body, rather than to put them on a table, walk away, and take a picture in the distance. And ever since then, I've been working with this idea, and I call it haptic space, um, that you can actually perceive things differently because things become part of processes rather than being objects which are isolated from process. And uh, I think that's dynamic and interesting. It comes up with interesting ideas and, and that's, that's where my whole impetus, my energy as an artist comes from. Okay. Um, so I'm going to remember my sequence now. The first place that I have decided to go is to go over to Penetang Machine uh, because I want the students to get a feel for what an archive is. That is a collection of disparate material that all feeds into an understanding of the same thing. And it's kind of like what we're doing with the inquiry 
at that. So we're going to go over and look at the archive, the Antenna Tank Machine, and we're going to experience the atmosphere over there with all the little cafes and uh, um, how different it is. Uh, so get into the specifics of that. Uh, that'll be uh, our first inquiry. People will take pictures, they'll uh, do drawings, and all of the kinds of things that are in the exercises. And then the second day, um, I think maybe the second day is the day we're going to uh, Christian Island. And uh, I want to look at St. Maria Montecure's number two, which is out there, and which is a much less, um, uh, it's a much less kind of saleable uh, facility than the one that's here. And it's seen less, and it's, it's interpreted less, and it's uh, used less to uh, present interpretation. So I like that kind of, uh, the, the, it isn't hyper described already. There's an opportunity to really describe it. And it's also got many, many glacial erratic stones around it. And I'm very interested in stones and what they do and how they do it. And uh, so that's another interesting aspect of that installation. Uh, and then we're going to do, um, I think we do the wine marsh, uh, which is which is the only part that is just the natural world. Everything else we're doing has to do with the constructed culture, society, which you have in Midland and Manitank, and which you have everywhere. So outside of that, there's the natural world, which have, it organizes itself, and we're going to be looking at that in my marsh. Um, and we're also going to look at the, um, the military establishment and um, uh, the stuff that went to it, the industrial stuff, that logging and stuff along the waterfront, um, and um, the heights at Pinatang Machine looking down um, at the water, which is a very unusual, it's a very unusual geological kind of uh, construction that's there. If we have time, we want to go to the Huronian Museum, um, because I want to take a look at the beginnings of the community here, which is the fur trade, and you know, how it, it obviously, just from the reading I've done, and I wasn't even aware how profoundly it affected culture in North America, and in this area in particular. So I'd like, I'd like to get into that. So those are the kind of places that we're going to go to. All of them are digested by the artists in the same way. They go through the same sets of exercises with them all, and uh, then they come up with some large thing at the end. Okay, and I think I've said that I am a born teacher, even compulsive teacher. I can't stop teaching people. I started uh, when I was very young with a younger brother, and I've never stopped. I think it would be good if I could stop and just you know, teach myself, and that's it. But no, I'm always involved with people, and uh, I guess partly it's because I'm interested in their ideas and what they're thinking. And so then it allows me to bring up my ideas and what I'm thinking and to get information from them, it helps me to tweak my thinking, I'm, I'm really interested in thought. I think it's the fun foundation, and in fact, the content of all art. And so, uh, interacting with people as an instructor, it, that kind of thinking helps me to think some more, and that's gratifying. Well, the first one would be haptic, because the inquiry method has to do with haptic space. It's a novel way of looking at things, so that's very really important. Um, another way is uh, to describe it as in, in being inquisitive, that this is an inquiry method. And that's one great thing about the, the kind of teaching that I'm doing and the uh, project that I'm working on, is that it's, it's not making a statement, it's asking a question. And that's, again, that's very motivating. And uh, the other thing is adventure, because um, artists are trained, 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 trained. They have all sorts of skills and all sorts of things that they develop. But when they get into this particular process, it's new. It's really different. And it is a great feeling uh, being on an adventure where you have very, very interesting material, very important issues to propel you along, and you don't know the end. Um, I'd like to share something about the finale of the course, uh, because the course is not just kind of nosily poking into a community, it's also about giving back. And um, the, 
the students, they document their work day by day. Again, that's important because the work isn't just something that's kind of made up and tossed away. These things are their statements about reality, and so the reality is being documented day by day. And the last thing that happens with this course is that there's a presentation made to the community uh, outdoors where anybody can come and watch it, and it is all of the information that the students have <coughs> collected, and uh, it's kind of a gift to the community.